Hey, how's it going? This is Chad Haig reporting from Southern India. I'd like to continue these series of videos on our lessons on the German language by moving on today to a different textbook than the one we have been using thus far. And this is because you might have noticed that the uh, last uh, series on German was begun nearly three years ago, back in like May or June of 2019. Well, three years later, here we are. Only seven out of 32 lessons have been completed and posted to YouTube. And that is because each lesson contains uh, so much information, which it is necessary for you to know, and we will be finishing that series, but I think it's useful now to hit the pause button and consider a different book. This is a foundation course in reading German by someone named Howard Martin um, that was later revised and expanded as an open online textbook by someone named Alan NG. This is something which I found in the University of Minnesota's um, uh, archive of open online textbook PDFs, and by adopting this into the present slideshow and YouTube video, I feel that we are doing exactly what we're supposed to with it. The purpose of an open online textbook in reading German is that it be put to use, and that students will benefit from it by gaining the valuable skill of being able to then turn around and actually read someone like Nietzsche or Hegel or Martin Luther in the original language. And of course, I thank the uh, people who created this very valuable course which um, presents a lot of the same information with regard to giving you the ability to read German rather than say uh, the kind of 100% conversational skills based approach which you have in those few high schools in America which actually do still teach German which is not many there's fewer every year um, but in contrast with that we want to be able to read German on a serious level well this um, course will, will give us the ability to do that. There's 280 slides, 16 units, so we're going to go through this pretty pretty fast paced, but I'll begin with the disclaimer that this is a part of the School of Forbidden Texts. Remember, you can join us there for as little as just $2 per month. The link to my Patreon is in the video description. So according to the authors of this textbook, one of the goals is to give you enough grammatical and syntactic information about the German language to enable you to then read any desired text with the help of a dictionary. So you're not going to be learning a lot of vocabulary in this course because learning grammatical forms will allow you to apply familiar patterns of word formation to accelerate the process of learning vocabulary. You can take a text in which you did not formally learn through memorization every unfamiliar word within it, but you can still deduce a lot of that vocabulary from context and from your understanding of how morphology indicates the role of the word within the sentence as a whole. This will allow you then to then uh, practice small-scale translation as a necessary foundation for then dealing with those more complex readings. So the first grammatical topic we'll consider here is nouns. Now, unlike English nouns, all German nouns are capitalized. There's the old joke of a student reading a text um, in the original German um, in a philosophy class uh, that has the word sein being with a capital S and um, concludes that they must be talking about the ultimate being who is of course God. Well, the professor says no, in German, all nouns are capitalized, even if they're not that important. So um, you could consider the following two very simple sentences says in German, der Mann hat einen Bruder und eine Schwester, aber keine Eltern mehr. Die Frau hat keine Schwestern und keine Bruder, aber zwei Tanten. So um, in um, English, you only really capitalize a noun if it's extremely important, like God is extremely important among beings, so it's got to be with a capital G. Um, but in German, even something as basic as der Mann, okay, just the man, die Frau, just any woman, uh, they're all capitalized, okay? And this will help you, especially if you're first learning the language, to um, keep track of which, where exactly different parts of the sentence are relative to one another. Of course, in addition, you have the first word of the sentence capitalized, but that's the. So the is not a noun, um, but we find it um, capitalized because it's the beginning of the sentence. But wait a minute, we have two sentences here. Der and die are both the, but they have different forms. Why is that? Oh, we find that German nouns differ from English um, for the additional reason that they all have a gender. Now, we do have a few gendered nouns within English, typically like farm animals, <laughs> like uh, you have a, a bull and a cow are both the same species, but one is explicitly gendered to be male, the other female. You have um, a, a nanny and a billy as goats. You have uh, a, a sow and a boar as male and female pigs. You have a ram and a ewe as male and female sheep. So we do have explicitly gendered um, nouns within English, but they're very rare. In contrast, in German, 
all nouns have a gender, but there's not only two. You have masculine and feminine, but also neuter. And in fact, um, even something that might um, be literally a female, like a little girl, das Mädchen, is actually referred grammatically um, to as an it for reasons we'll get to like on the next slide. So this will likely sound very intimidating when you're first learning the language you'll think you'll have to formally memorize the gender of every single noun, but uh, the book tells us now that such memorization is not particularly important if you're reading German. What is maybe more important um, at that stage is to recognize that the definite articles, which typically pr precede the noun within the sentence, will differ according to gender and will undergo other changes according to the role that the word plays within the sentence, whether it's the subject, the direct object, the indirect object, etc., as we'll get to later. But for the moment, we'll consider the forms of the definite article uh, the, okay, um, not only in terms of gender, but also in terms of the nominative case, which is the case of a noun that is the subject of the sentence. We have der Tisch, the table, masculine, die Feder, the feather or quill pen, feminine, and das Bett, the bed, neuter, okay. But um, this is something which um, is recommended for you to learn along with the noun itself, okay? Because there's only a few cases where you can determine the gender simply by looking at the noun, but we'll go through those exceptions right now. If a word ends with chen or lein, they are neuter. As I mentioned, um, das Mädchen is the little girl. Well, that's an it because of this rule. We also have uh, the tendency to add that to other familiar words um, like, um, you know, uh, Stadt is um, city. Well, Stich, das Stichen is the little town because this suffix denotes what's called diminutives. Like in, um, uh, what is it? In English, we have the cigar is a big cigar and then the cigarette is a little cigar, quite literally, okay? So then we also have um, some um, humans and animals that are obviously literally male or female, and they usually have the equivalent gender, grammatically speaking, too. We have der Mann and die Frau. Well, those really are the same species of Homo sapiens, but these are explicitly gendered in much the same way that they would be in English. We also have, once again, der Bulle, die Kuh, farm animals, um, der Vater, die Mutter, mother and father. Okay. Um, we, there are other um, endings which denote gender. For example, all nouns that end in I, Heit, E, in, Kite, Schaft, Tit, Ung, etc. are feminine. Consider the following examples. Die Bäckerei, die Tragodie, die Gesundheit, die Lehrerin, die Freundlichkeit, die Landschaft, die Zeitung, die Universität. The pluralization of nouns within German is a good deal more complicated than it would be in English. This is because in English we pretty much just add um, S or ES to a word to pluralize it. We have dog, dogs, cat, cats. Well, that seems like a universal rule. Well, we do have a few exceptions, such as uh, men becomes men, goose becomes geese, ox becomes oxen, child becomes children. Some are invariant. Fish, fish, deer, deer, etc. Um, but in German, it's much more complicated than that, and in fact, I'd have to refer you to the first lecture series to see all of the rules, but we'll just consider right now that um, there are some words in German that are pluralized by adding an S, but those are usually borrowed foreign words, such as hotel, auto, restaurant, and these are pluralized that English way of, like, say, zwei hotels, okay, but the range of plural forms within German is actually much wider than the English exceptions given above, okay? And this is something which we can only consider a few examples of right now. We have der Mann, for example, which is pluralized as die Männer, in much the same way that man becomes men, okay? Then we have die Frau, pluralized as die Frauen, kind of like oxen, oxen, okay? But then we have das Ergebnis, and die Ergebnisse, okay? Well, but that's not anything like what we've seen within English, so there's a lot more rules, but um, that, will, that will suffice for the moment for just kind of introducing this topic, okay? Now you might have noticed that the definite article in the plural nominative is D, regardless of gender of the noun, whether it is um, masculine, feminine, or neuter, it's still D. Okay, but now we have to learn some very important verbs. The most important verbs, are, arguably, are sein and haben. These are the words for being and 
having. Now, there's a lot of different forms which have to be memorized in much the same way that in English there are many different forms for be, and this is something which we'll begin the memorization of with the infinitive forms. Now, sein and haben are the infinitive forms which have not yet been conjugated into anything else to reflect, uh, say, uh, uh, time, tense, or person, or number, and therefore the infinitive form is what you will find listed within the dictionary. We'll consider first the present tense form of sein. This is highly irregular in all of its forms. Um, as you can see that um, in the uh, first person singular, it's ich bin, I am, and then it's du bist, you are, er ist, sie ist, es ist, etc. But um, in the plural, it actually starts with an S, much like sein, whereas it starts with a B or an I in the uh, singular forms. You have wir sind, ihr seid, sie sind, sie sind. So this is something which of course reflects uh, the paradigm of persons within the German language which is a little different than it would be in English. We have different forms of you in German whereas in English we have only one single word at least at this point we, we do and you know in the past within archaic forms of English there was obviously like there was also thou and thee etc but here uh, in modern English all we have is you okay but in German you have um formal and informal use, okay, you also have singular and plural use, okay, and we'll go through all this in greater detail later, but uh, we'll consider now the present tense conjugations of the verb haben. Well, ich habe, du hast, er hat, um, wir haben, er habt, sie haben, etc. Now that we move on to the past tense, whereas before our words started with s, much like sein, or um, or B ich bin or um, er ist. Now we have another letter that it begins with. Now it becomes ich war, du warst, er war, wir waren, ihr wart, sie waren, etc. Well, this is kind of like in English, the past tense of be is actually was. Okay. Um, now, much like in English also, the past tense, simple past tense of haben becomes um, ich hatte, du hattest, er hat, wir hatten, ihr hattet. Sie hatten, etc. Kind of like I had, we had, etc. So I had mentioned earlier that the uh, form of the noun and article will change in German depending on the role that it plays within the sentence. This is something which in English is largely deduced from word order. For example, um, we have the sentences the man ate the chicken and the chicken ate the man it means two radically different things. The first one is a reference to a food ranger going to Mexico and eating some delicious grilled chicken. The second one refers to a very scary monster, uh, which is, you know, a chicken large enough to eat a man. Okay, but the uh, morphological forms of the nouns themselves actually do not change. In both cases, we have man and man, and we have chicken and chicken. We only know which one is the subject and the object with the verb eat, eating in the middle, um, because of the position lying before or after the verb. Well, in German, we don't need to rely solely on um, the order of the words because the form will change to reflect that. This is kind of like what you find in the Latin language. You have uh, puellae rosam dat as having the same meaning as puellae rosam dat puer and rosam dat puer puellae because rosam, with that M at the end, already tells you that it's accusative. Um, the I at the end of puellae already tells you that it's the indirect object and puer already tells you that it's the subject etc well in german you find something very similar in which um the uh form even of the um, article in some cases will change to reflect things like the direct object of the sentence role for example we have um the following paradigm of um the uh, forms for the definite article in which the masculine nominative is der, but the masculine accusative is den. We can find, then, that um, in talking about uh, them hitting the ball, okay, you're talking about baseball players, I guess, or cricket players, they hit the ball, okay, we would say uh, sie schlagen den ball, okay, we don't say sie schlagen der ball, okay, because the ball is the direct object of that action. Okay, now we do find 
only such a change for the accusative in the masculine, in feminine it's still d, neuter it's still das, plural it's still d, but those will have their own changes to reflect the other cases. Now we have to talk about the indefinite article. So the definite article is the, the indefinite article is a, uh, okay, or an, or one. Okay, and this is quite fittingly ein, which is very similar to the German word for one itself, okay. Now if we consider the following paradigm, we see that um, in the nominative masculine, it's ein Tisch, for example. In the masculine accusative, however, it becomes einen Tisch. So that N at the ending of the um, article, okay, will um, will uh, be present even if we do not find um, a morphological change in the form of the noun itself. In both cases, it's Tisch, but the indefinite article before has that extra N. Okay, and this is a very useful clue. You find within the feminine uh, some sort of uh, changes with the indefinite article to reflect the gender. Okay, so it's Ein Tisch, but then it's Eine Feder, Eine Feder in both cases. Um, and then we have um, in the plural, okay, we have no um, plural of a, obviously, because that would be contradictory, but you do have a plural form of the negative version of it, which is kind. You could say, yeah, no beds here, keine betten. The word order is one of the more difficult topics within the German language because in a certain sense, word order is more fluid because you have these case forms to tell you things that would strictly have to be communicated by word order within English, okay? So the following two sentences are equivalent. You have der Hund hat den Ball, okay? The dog has the ball, but den Ball hat der Hund is um, the same sentence. Both are perfectly valid, and we know the meaning because the morphological change, den Ball, is uh, the, the same in both cases, regardless of its position. So now we have to talk about yes-no questions within German. Yes-no questions always begin with the verb, okay? So, um, sind sie gesund? Okay, the verb um, sind is right there at the beginning, just as it would be in English. Um, you are healthy is a statement. Are you healthy is a question. Remember that um, English sometimes uses the verb do in a way that will not be translated cor uh, correspondingly into German. So um, in German, uh, or in English, we would say, does he have a fever? But in German, it's just, has he fever? Hat er fieber. Um, English also complicates matters by using do to negate simple statements and questions. Don't you have any shoes? is how you would say it in English, but in German it's actually much more straightforward. Haben Sie keine Schuhe? So in uh, the next uh, slide, we will consider the question words within German, which once again, there are many more uh, than we will find on this slide as provided by the textbook itself. I actually added another image on the right hand side to show you a lot more. Wo, was, wer, wie, wann, warum, was, wo, wie viel, wie viele, wie lange, wohin, woher, mit wem. Okay, we'll go over all of that later, but right now we'll just focus on the way that important uh, question words to begin learning include the interrogative pronouns wer, which is who, wer kennt den Hund, who owns this, who knows this dog, sorry, uh, wen beißt der Hund, whom is the dog biting, was weiß ich, what do I know. So that will complete unit one. I look forward to moving on to the next unit with you guys later.